How to lose weight and improve cholesterol. This is a great video we're going to share with you what you all have been asking about. How does it affect your cholesterol? Studies show low-carb diets improve cholesterol. Low-carbohydrate diets can help a person lose weight and can help a person maintain good health. Carbohydrates and cholesterol. One of the most common debates among dietitians is the role that carbs play in eating a healthy diet. Some dietitians believe that carbs are an essential for adequate nutrition and that it increases your risk of neurological disorders, cancer, and diabetes. You know, uh, they're showing that cancer feeds on the sugars that are in the carbohydrates. Others believe that we need to eat carbohydrates in order to have good health and that carbs should be part of everyone's diet, making up the majority of the calories we take in. The scientific research shows some significant evidence that low carb is actually better than low fat in reducing markers and risk factors for heart disease, including in regards to lipid profile. How many carbs do we need? According to the Institute of Medicine, every adult should take in at least 175 grams of carbohydrates per day, especially women who are pregnant. This represents about 29% of the calories taken in by a diet containing about 2,400 calories. In pregnancy, it is recommended that proteins be restricted to less than 15% of calories consumed, and about 30% of the calories taken in should come in the form of carbohydrates. Adrenal fatigue is another medical condition that requires moderate carbohydrate consumption. Adrenal fatigue happens when the adrenal glands are overworked so that cortisol levels are too low. Cortisol levels increase whenever a person adopts a low-carb diet. Carbs are recommended for athletes who train up to six days per week because carbs are the optimal source for cellular food in intense workouts and weight loss lifting for adequate performance. Athletes who restrict carbs generally de develop poor training habits and need to go on a diet that contains at least some carbohydrates for cellular food ex during exercise. Athletes should take in about 20% of their calories of carbohydrates. It depends, however, on the health goals of the individual, the individual's weight, and on their training schedule. Those that exercise heavily need 40 to 50 percent of their car calories from carbohydrates. They also need fat, which will quickly will be quickly metabolized by the body during a workout. You know, for most of us guys that are obese or the gals that are obese, you don't actually need any carbs in your diet. You know, cavemen, our ancestors, uh, didn't have available to them the amount of carbohydrates that have been pushed on us by the food industry. Low-carb diets are not for everyone anyway. Let's look at that. In short, low-carb carbohydrates uh, diets are not for everyone, though bodybuilders and other athletes can and do follow modified low-carb diets, namely the cyclical carbohydrate diet and targeted ketogenic diet where carb intake fluctuates around workouts. For the obese and those with overweight issues, a low-carb diet can really serve two major purposes, to lose the weight and keep it off. Additionally, those with type 2 diabetes or prediabetes will also benefit from a low-carb diet plan in stabilizing blood sugar levels and significant weight loss which can result in reversal of type 2 diabetes. You know, look at this picture. There's a guy with an apple and a weight working out. And on the other side, an obese person with a hamburger, a bun, and fries. You know, the, the meat in that burger is not the problem. It's the bun. It's the French fries is not the problem. It's the grease that they use, the trans fat grease that they use to cook those foods. How low-carb diets work. Low-carb diets restrict carb intake to as little as 20 grams per day, such as the case in ketogenic diet. This restriction prompts a metabolic process known as ketosis, where the body begins to burn body fat and dietary fat for fuel instead of dietary carbs, which in turn into glucose fuel in the body. Contrary to all the hype about fat, 
low carb diets are rich, fat rich, and are primarily focused on high intake of healthy fats, which in turn promote the body's natural fat burning process. What about cholesterol? You know, look at this picture of the eggs. For a long time, we were told not to eat eggs. We were told that if you have an egg, have a white egg omelet. And now it's being shown that eggs are one of the most perfect foods you can put in your body. What about cholesterol? What the studies show, the Mayo Clinic states that a ketogenic diet has desirable effects on diabetes, heart disease, and metabolic syndrome, and that eating a low-carb diet is more effective in lowering bad HDL cholesterol than diets that are moderate in carbs. While some studies have shown that intake of saturated fat to raise blood glucose and cholesterol levels, these studies are almost short in duration, as little as a few weeks. In fact, several long-term studies have shown no association between saturated fat and high blood cholesterol levels. Additionally, studies of low-carbohydrate, high-saturated diets suggest no impact on blood cholesterol and, in fact, lower markers for heart disease. One study, Barclay, A.W., Pesco, P., Macmillan, Price, J., etc., Climatic Index, Glycemic Index, Glycemic Load, and chronic disease risks and meta-analysis of observational studies concluded that using the glycemic index, GI scale, that rates a food's ability to impact glucose levels to consume lower GI foods is associated with lower triglycerides and higher good HDL profiles. One meta-analysis, Santos' uh, systematic review and meta-analysis of clinical trials of the effects of low carbohydrates on cardiovascular risk factors of 17 low-carb diet trials consisting of 1,140 obese subjects determined that eating low-carb neither increased nor decreased the bad cholesterol. Benefits of a low-carb lifestyle, weight loss, builds muscle, Diabetes prevention, lower blood pressure, reduces LDL bad cholesterol, increases HDL the good cholesterol, increases level of physical activity, improved memory, mental concentration, and prevention of muscle tissue loss. So if you needed any more reasons to get on this diet, these are them. What was low carb associated with? Significant weight loss and reduced body mass index. Significant improvements in several heart risk factors. Lower level of triglycerides, healthier blood pressure, improved fasting glucose, reduced risk of metabolic syndrome, which is a risk factor for heart disease, decreased levels of belly fat and weight and waist size. And I can attest to that because I've gone from a 58 to a 42 so far. Improvements in the good HDL cholesterol levels. Another study, Seri Triano, Saturated Fat Acids and Risk of Coronary Heart Disease, reported that the replacement of saturated fat with carbohydrates and especially refined carbs and sugars that have become commonplace in the last several decades is associated with neither no improvement or increased risk for cardiovascular disease as well as higher risk for diathemia. The study's researchers concluded that considering the current epidemic levels of obesity and type 2 diabetes that figures insulin resistant, reducing intake of carbs and sugar along with weight control should be a top priority in the public's dietary goals. Is a low-carb diet healthy? There's your answer. Other considerations. Moreover, no low-carb diet advocates trans fats, also known as partially hydrogenated vegetable oil or hydrogenated vegetable oil, which are the worst fats contributing to an increase of heart disease. Trans fats are typically found in fried foods, sweets, baked goods, processed snacks, and food products, cookies, crackers, and vegetable shortening, none of which is allowed on any reputable low-carb diet. You know, what we're trying to say is it's not fat, it's the type of fat. You know, when you talk about fried foods, 
uh, sweets, baked goods, processed snacks, and food products that primarily has trans fats in them. So it's the wrong kind of fat. Good, healthy fat is good for you. But trans fats that have been pushed on us by the food industry are the cause, the major cause of obesity in America. Final thoughts. You should talk with your doctor before altering your diet, especially if you suffer from heart disease or high cholesterol. A nutritionist or a dietitian can help as well. Now, talking about a help as well, we're still offering the complete guide to the ketogenic diet. Click on the link in the description box to get your copy of the complete guide to the ketogenic diet. Or go to SaturdayMorningDiet.com, ketogenic diet ebook. It's a bargain at $19.95 and comes with many added features other than just the, the, uh, the diet book itself. See you there on the next video. To your health. Bye-bye.